System D, or a lot more accurately, System D init, is the de facto standard init system under Linux. And I really don't care. It could be sysv init, it could be openrc, it could be run it, or anything else out there. The init system is something that runs when I start up my system. It should never bother me again and just run in the background. And from my experience, system d init does exactly that. But you probably noticed there is maybe not a lot of people, but enough people to be loud that really care about their init system, and in most cases, really don't like system D. And I would not even be remotely surprised to see some of those people in the comments section right now. Go and check for yourself, I guarantee they're gonna be there. And you probably even know that there are distributions out there whose pretty much sole reason for existing is protesting system D and offering a different init system, Devilwin being the most obvious example. But did you know that there was an advocacy campaign behind some of these distributions? I only recently found out, so I bet you didn't. This is the init freedom campaign, and it's run by the least surprising distro of all time. Devilin. In case you don't know, Devilin is Debian minus System D. And in this incarnation, it's pretty tame. Init Freedom is about restoring a sane approach to PID1. Your init system usually runs as PID1, that's what they mean by that. That respects portability, diversity, and freedom of choice. It lists out the alternatives available on Devilwin itself, distributions out there that also offer alternatives like, say, Gentoo, Dragora, MX Linux, Parabola, Slackware, Void Linux, and things like that and also other things that are not Linux that also don't use systemd, which is everything that is not Linux. I don't think there's anything outside of Linux that uses systemd. So you have things like the BSD family, you have other Unix-like systems like GNU Herd. I, is, does anybody actually use GNU Herd? If someone uses GNU Herd, let me know in the comment section down below. Minix, Open Indiana, and things like that. And also alternative device managers that aren't related to you, Dev. Because having any system D utilities on your system is going to poison it, and we can never let that happen. Obviously, that's just a joke, but it's not too far off the general sentiment. Now, this is the modern version of the website, but this has seen quite a few changes over the years, and in the original form, it was a bit more aggressive, confrontational, whatever word you want to be using. And thanks to archive.org, we can go and see that. What's your first step? Devon was born out of a controversy over the decision to use, I think it's supposed to say System D, as the default init system for Debian. The official Debian position on System D is full of claims that others have debunked. Now, we'll go over these debunked claims because this takes us to a amusing page. Interested readers can continue discussing this hot topic in the System D controversy. Now, sadly, this talk page is completely gone off the internet. The archive. I can't seem to find. However, we encourage you to keep your head cool and your voice civil. At Devilwin, we're more interested in programming them wrong than looking back. Programming them wrong is such a great statement. When I first read that, I thought it was a mistake. No, they actually mean to say programming them wrong. And the init freedom section also says something vastly different. It says a lot more. While Debian claims that System D is becoming the de facto standard init system for Linux, a number of GNU Linux distributions, some new, beg to differ. Well, you can beg to differ as much as you want, but when Arch Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, Fedora, PopOS, should I keep going on, are all using System D, and this would be the vast majority of people on Linux, that sounds like a de facto standard. Not doing what the de facto standard is doing does not stop it being a de facto standard, it just means you're doing something different. 
while Debian claims that it, System D, is better than existing alternatives for all Debian's current use cases, these rebel GNU Linux distributions refuse this one-size-fits-all vision of the Starnix world that breaks portability, ignores backwards compatibility, and replaces existing services, forcing System D into adoption. No one forced System D into adoption. They just felt like this was true, that it was better for their use cases, so distributions started to adopt it. And knit freedom is about restoring a sane approach to PID1 that respects diversity and freedom of choice. This is still being said in the modern version, but this next part isn't. Although it's true the venerable Sysphia knit has flaws that should be addressed in some way, System D supporters wrongly claim System D is overwhelmingly better than any existing alternative anywhere the technical architecture is involved. The Init Freedom campaign is here to disprove that claim. And then the rest of the page is pretty much the same as what it says in the modern version, albeit with some extra additions because, you know, more distributions offer different choices. Now let's have a look at these so-called debunked claims. This takes you to suckless.org, and we all know how much I like suckless.org. Some of the points in here are actually reasonable. I'm not going to say that every single thing they say is just complete nonsense. However, there is some nonsense in here. I would argue the biggest problem with this write-up is it frames all of the problems going forward as if they're problems with an init system, when what it's really talking about is System D as a project. It even goes as far as saying System D is a replacement for the standard init command, which normally runs as process ID1 on initialization of a Unix boot up. This is not correct. System D is not an init system. We've been through this many, many times. System D init. That is the init system. There are other components in system D, like timers, like UDEV, and a bunch of other stuff. That is not the init system, and that is run completely separately. System D breaks POSIX IPC. System D login D deletes your message queues. Neither of these problems relating to system D init, these are issues with login D. System D breaks the mouse again. Once again, not a problem with the init system, this was a bug in UDEV. All software is going to have bugs. Having a bug that then gets patched does not mean the software is inherently bad, that means there was a bug that got patched. All software is going to go through this. System D does UEFI bootload. Should System D's PID be changed from 1 to a negative or imaginary number? It now exists before the kernel itself during a boot up. This, I think, is the best example of completely misunderstanding what System D is doing. System D boot is a rename of a project called Gummy Boot. System D boot has nothing to do with the rest of System D. You can run it entirely separately. Gen2 even provides instructions on using it with OpenRC. At this point, I have to think that people just intentionally misunderstand this. System D boot has nothing to do with System D. System D replaces sudo and su. Machine CTL gained a new verb, shell, which opens a fresh shell on the target container or the host. It is similar to the existing login command of machine CTL, but spawns the shell directly without prompting for username or password. The pseudo machine.host now refers to the local host and is used by default. Hence, machine CTL shell can be used as a replacement for SU dash, which spawns a session as a fresh system D unit in a way that is fully isolated from the originating session. This provides a use case for why you might want to do this, but as we've seen from systems that still ship SU and sudo, it didn't replace it, it offered a different functionality for a certain use case. And that's just scratching the surface. This goes on and on and on and on and on. And most of it has absolutely nothing to do with system D init. There is a small handful of them that do. But if we're going to be talking about the init system, 
why are the complaints not about the init system? I think the funniest thing about the init freedom campaign is if you just take the name, the implication it has about system D. Free and freedom are used in the FOSS space basically interchangeably with Libre, but this puts it in your mind that system D in some way is not free, which obviously is very far from the truth. It's as free as any of the other projects out there. And there's no one forcing you to use System D. You're always free to go and use something else or install another init system on any distro you want out there. The issue is most distros are not going to help you to go and make that happen. If you really want to use Runner on Ubuntu, you can go and compile it and set it up yourself. They just don't feel like supporting you. And hey, if you do want to get involved, they have a subreddit. The subreddit is basically dead, but there is a subreddit here, so maybe you can go and revive it and start talking about how system D is terrible and needs to go away or so. As you can probably tell, I'm kind of mocking this entire idea. It should be pretty obvious from my tone. Um, I don't really care about system D. As I said, if you don't want to use it, don't go and use it. If you do want to use it, there's a lot of choices out there. Most distros use it. It's the de facto standard. But let me know your thoughts about System D in the comment section down below. I'm sure that's going to lead to very healthy discussions. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, which you got my Patreon, Scribes, and Libero Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be for it for me. I'm out. <laughs>